In this video, we are going to look at how we're going to run Selenium test in a headless browser. We're going to use both Chrome and Firefox. I'm going to show you examples of using Chrome as well as examples of using Firefox. And we're going to run a script using headless. Headless means the browser doesn't actually open. You're running a front end test. You need a browser, but it, the browser is going to open in the background. It's not going to have a GUI where you actually can see it. That is what a headless is. Um, both browsers support that and why would you need that right a lot of you might be asking why would you need that is because uh, sometimes you don't want it you just don't want it in front of you because it, you're doing some other work and you're running a test it always going to interrupt you for me at least that's the case um, I trigger my job right my test I will I'll run a hundred tests which will take maybe two three minutes or maybe even five minutes sometimes depending on the tests and you want to keep working on your computer you want to be working on something else but every minute the browser is going to open and it's going to block you that's annoying that's one reason that's not even the main reason the other reason is um when you're running in an environment when you don't really have a monitor right like you when you're running it in docker container when you're running it in a, in, in a remote server you don't have the actual browser uis so you need to run it in the background okay so the one I'm going to show you right now is the simple way. I'm actually on a Mac, so you can do the same thing, Mac or Windows. When you're running it on a Linux, like on a remote machine, you have to pass in more options than the one I'm going to show. But the idea is the same. I just want to show how you run a headless mode, uh, Chrome or uh, Firefox. Okay, let's just get dive right into it. Uh, we're going to do Chrome first. There are two different ways uh, to do it. I have my examples here, but I'm going to write them from scratch. So I'm going to do a new file. I'm going to say headless chrome example.py. Okay, this is going to be in Python. Uh, I'm going to use Python. Um, the concept is the same. If you're using Java, then you just got to look up what kind of options to use. So let's just write the, the script with the way we normally would, right? You do from Selenium import web driver, right? And then normally you do driver, driver is webdriver.chrome right and then you do driver get you get some site http uh, demo store.supersqa.com let's just go there um, i'm going to put a breakpoint here a lot of people ask me this question what happens is if i don't put a breakpoint the browser is going to close right away that is a new selenium thing um, it has selenium chrome thing uh, when the script finishes, it will just kill the browser with, without you having to do driver close or driver dot quit or anything. It will just close it. It's really annoying for a lot of people. So there is there is options you can pass in. So I won't do that. But the easiest thing to do is just put a breakpoint at the end of your script. If you don't know how to use a breakpoint. I have a video about breakpoints. I'll, I'll link it in the description. You can check that out. So let's run this. Actually, I will need a. a environment so let me just create a, a virtual environment python 3 dash mvnv the reason i'm doing uh oh, and i gotta give it a name temp the reason i'm creating a virtual environment is because i don't want to install selenium on my default python uh, because i just want to keep my system clear and then i'm going to pip and install selenium as you can see i created a virtual environment i activated it and i installed selenium which is like super fast right you saw that Okay, then I'm just going to run that script. I'm going to do Python headless Chrome example is going to open the browser, go to the demo site and hit the breakpoint. One other thing we want to do is actually let's print the title so we so we know it actually worked because when we do it in the headless, we're not going to know if it actually did it or not. So we're going to do print driver dot title. So we're just going to print the title of the page. In fact, I can now I can remove the breakpoint. I don't even need it. So I'm going to hit I'm going to hit run. Browser opens. We can see it so quick. It printed the title right here. OK, now this is the normal way. This is not headless. Now, how do we make it run in a headless mode? I'm going to look at my example. So we're going to actually create options. We're going to say Chrome. This is just a variable options webdriver dot chrome option we're going to create this chrome object options object and we're going to add an option to it so i'm going to do chrome options dot add argument you're going to do dash dash headless that's a string dash dash headless so there is two ways to do it you can do it dash dash headless 
or dash dash headless equals new. You want to know the distinguish the uh, the difference. So if you're using Chrome 109 and above, 109 or version 101 and newer, most of us are using that, right? 101, 109 is quite old. But if you're in automation, you might be testing stuff in the old browser, right? Depends on what your company wants to do. You, you want to support all the browsers that users are actually using. You analyze how many, what percentage of your user is using X version of Chrome, then you want to test for it. So if you're using anything older, then you use this headless. If you're using anything newer than 109, Chrome 109, then you use this headless equal new. Well, you can use both for the new browsers. If you want to use, if you're using newer browsers, both of them would work. Now there's quite, quite differences. Um, when you use the old way, let's just call this the old way and this the new way. Um, in, in the old way, the headless, um, it's, it's the browser fingerprint. So like if you, if you, let's say you're scraping sites, it's easy for them to tell that you're using automatic stuff is that you're a bot. This one would make it look more realistic. Um, extensions and ex like Chrome extensions, right? If you're using headless, you won't load those. If you're using headless new, it would have all the extensions. So like if you have a test, for example, that relies on extensions, for example, password managers or something like that. If you're using a headless, the extensions are not available. Um, you're using the new the extensions are available. Um, in terms of speed, the headless is a little bit faster. So it depends. If you have thousands of tests and speed is super important to you, then you would consider this. But if you have a lot of tests, speed is important to you. But also functionality-wise, if you want to use extensions and things like that, then you have no choice but to use this. It's slightly slower um, according to my research. So that those are really the most um, important differences. And also one more thing is, since this is the old way of doing it, eventually they might deprecate. As of now it works, but eventually they might deprecate it. So I'm gonna comment out the, the new way. Let's just run it this way, okay? So now I'm gonna run the script. And you, uh, a browser actually open. Why did a browser open? Oh, we didn't pass in the options, right? So then I can say options is Chrome options, okay? Now when I run it, in fact, let me put my taskbar here so you can see that it did not, it did not, uh, let me make it, move it up a little bit. I want to show you that it did not actually open a browser. So I'm going to run it. You'll see it moving, shaking a little bit, right? You see that? A browser never opened, but it printed the title. That means it, it was able to navigate to the site. I'm going to do it again. Notice here, it's going to do a little bit of shake, like as if it, was, it tried to open or something. I run it, you see that? A little shake, but it printed the title. So that means it actually opened the browser, navigated to the site, got the title and printed it. So let's try the other way, the new way. This should be exact same results. I run it and there you go, exact same results. When we run in a small script like this, we're not gonna notice the speed difference, okay? Maybe you can use a time it. If you know the time it library, which is a built-in library, you can time the two and uh, it would be a nice little experiment actually. Okay, so now that is uh, Chrome. Let's talk about Firefox. Firefox is even simpler. I'm gonna say headless Firefox example dot py. In fact, for the Firefox one, since I explained everything, there's no need to type everything from scratch. So for let, let's run the script here. Uh, I'm gonna do Python headless Firefox. It's pretty much doing the same thing. It opened it opened Firefox, it opened it in my other monitor. And there you go, it went there and it printed the site. But Firefox is not gonna automatically close it. That's that's kind of nice. It used to be like that with Chrome too. It's just a year or two ago, it uh, started to close it automatically. I don't have anything that says close the browser, so Firefox is not going to close the browser. If I wanted to close the browser, I would do driver.close or driver that quit okay now if i run it it's going to put another firefox but it should actually close it unless i have a typo it did okay it did close it so now to make it uh, headless we're just going to do that the same thing i'm going to delete this guy same thing we're going to do firefox options web driver firefox options we're going to add an argument for headless and we're just going to pass in that option in this case, we just do headless. There is no newer version of it, like headless equals new. That doesn't exist as of now, as of making this, this video. So if we run this, 
If the browser shouldn't open again. We saw that little shake just like we saw it was Chrome and it printed the title. Okay, headless Firefox one more time printed the title. That's one way. Um, another way is if you don't want to pass in for, for Firefox is another nice one that I actually like this. If you don't want to pass in uh, this argument, right? Because let's say you, you don't want to check this into Git, but you actually want to run it lo um, uh, locally with headless mode. So you can actually set an environment variable. So I'm going to remove this. Okay, I'm going to run the script again to make sure browser opens. You see that the browser actually opens and closes. So there is, I put it here. You can actually set this environment variable, export variable name, set it to one. Okay, I'm just, for the notes, I'm going to do one. If you set it to one, which is true in most cases, right? I just set that variable. If you're on Windows, you do set. Set variable name equals one. If, you, if you're on Windows using CMD, Okay. If you're using on Win, if you're on Windows using PowerShell, then you do dollar side env in the environment. Um, just look up how to set environment variable. We just set an environment variable. Okay. This doesn't work on Mac. I don't know why it actually did an error. So now let's run the script. That variable is set, so it run in headless mode. You saw the browser never open, even though we just have the normal Firefox, right? The normal browser here. Because we set this environment variable, Firefox actually opened in a headless mode. So that's how you run headless, and that's the advantage of running headless. Um, again, like I said, for me, for example, in the bootcamp, in my bootcamp framework, there are 200 tests. Okay, 100 of them are front end for now. Um, obviously, that's going to keep growing. So when I'm sitting here and working and I want to run that test, um, every, every test the browser opens and it comes front. So we'll block everything else I'm doing. So it's really annoying. I have to sit here and wait for the test to finish. But if I run it in the headless mode, that doesn't happen. I can continue doing my work while the test is running. And at the end, I'm going to get the reports anyway. So everything is pretty much the same. So it's really, really helpful for me. And running a headless in Linux, um, that's a different story. I'll create another video on how to run the same kind of tests on a Linux environment, or in, which is either a remote machine or a Docker container. And uh, uh, keep a lookout on that. If you're new to the channel, subscribe so you get notifications when this type of videos are published. All I do is create courses and content that helps people learn QA automation and get, become a better automation engineer. So I hope you like the video. I hope you give me a thumbs up. That would help with the algorithm a lot. And I hope you subscribe and uh, thank you for watching this video.